Well, look at that. Just got something in from Red Dragon. Well, hello there, Real Gamers. RetroRob here, and welcome to RetroRob Plays Everything. If you're new, do me a big favor. Hit that subscribe button down below. And if you're a regular, hey, give me a thumbs up, because you know this is going to be amazing, right? 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 Anyway, over the years, I have covered a whole bunch of different mice, keyboards, and controllers, many of them from dubious sources. So it's always a joy when I can actually cover something from a company I've heard of. And today, we have got the Fizz keyboard from, yeah, that's right, Red Dragon. I'm stepping up in the world, I guess. They sent me this guy to take a look at. And since I cannot remember specs worth crud, we're gonna go take a quick look at their website. And here we are at Red Dragon's site, and we've got the Fizz K617 Magnetic Switch Keyboard. And you're gonna notice this term, Magnetic Switch. Um, the difference between that and the keyboard you're probably using right now is the keyboard you're using right now, probably, probably, unless you're using one of these, um, it has basically one point of actuation. In other words, it is a digital device. It You press down, it's a zero or a one. Um, <laughs> better explained, I suppose, is it's a lot like an arcade button. It's either up or it's down, and that is it. Been working that way forever. On a magnetic switch keyboard, you have a magnet mounted in the top of, actually, I think, here, wait, we can zoom in right here. All right, you got a little magnet, actually, in the key. And a sensor down below can sense how strong that magnetic field is by the position of the key. Therefore, you can say, hey, I want my keyboard to be really sensitive. So when I just basically tap the key a little bit, it actuates. Or you can say, I want to hit it really hard to actuate it. And that is a pretty big advantage over your stock keyboards that are pretty abundant today. While I was recording this, I made it sound like it was how hard you hit the keyboard that mattered. It isn't. It's the depth at which the key is pressed. So if you press it halfway or press it all the way down is what matters, not how hard you hit it. But another thing you can do with it, which is really pretty interesting, is you can say, I want to actuate as this key when I press it lightly. I also want it to actuate as another key when I press it harder. A good example would be maybe you're playing Call of Duty and you want to be able to duck and then just switch over to dropping to the ground. You can do that with something like this with the same key. That's pretty cool. Anyway, let's take a look at the rest of this. It's got a 60% layout uh, with 61 keys. It is wired. Uh, I'm going to go back a little bit to the 60% keyboard. Uh, it's one I've actually worked with quite a bit. Uh, I use a lot of small, you know, like little like nooks and such, and I tend to use it for those. Uh, I also use it when I'm going off to a LAN party or something like that uh, because they're very easy to stow. They are made for gaming. Um, I do. Uh, I use one in my office. I actually do use it as my uh, like not not this keyboard yet. Uh, I haven't even tried this keyboard, but. I actually use a 60% keyboard as my main keyboard at work. It always gets a lot of looks. Like, what the heck is that? That thing's tiny. But anyway, uh, just note that their primary purpose is gaming. You can definitely use them in the office like I do, but it's focused on one thing. Anyway, all right. 8 kilohertz polling rate. I, I'm saying 8,000 hertz. Sorry, 8 kilohertz. Well, that's same, right? Yeah. yeah I'm not a complete idiot. It's mostly hyper fast actuation actuation point adjustable as I mentioned earlier RGB backlighting so it looks pretty dedicated magnetic switch which they mentioned up here and of course yeah it's for FPS gaming and there's a couple more pictures of the keyboard here and a little bit oh yeah it's got this gradient gray which I thought was pretty cool too but uh, the actual look of it we'll we'll see that when I unbox it and I think Oh yeah, there's also an application for programming it, which kind of makes sense when you got two actions with one key. And they mention it's focus on gaming. 
And there we go. All right, let's get this thing unboxed. And here's the box. And I'm not going to do the front of the box, back of the box shtick today. And that's largely because I've already covered most of what's on this box on the website. But uh looks nice. It's a good presentation, guys. Thumbs up on that. Anyway, let's open her up. And... Come on. There we go. Ooh. Oh, that's actually really nice looking. All right. Presentation is a big deal, people. A big deal. There are some people who disagree with that, but... Um, I was just reading a book. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's, it's about right brain thinking. And uh, I'm a left brainer. A left brainer, but... Um, they talk about how people in a predominantly right or sorry left brain society uh, do not get the importance of packaging, but they also react to it. So if you put something in cheap packaging, people think it's cheap. If you put it in good packaging, people think it's good. It's just it's built into us. All right. Anyway, we have one. Really, really, t oh, this is actually useful. Look at that. Shortcut keys. Or like, it's the list of shortcuts. Oh, well, that's a sticker, isn't it? Is this a sticker? That's kind of nice. We got the uh, key cap pullers. If you'd like to do that. We've got USB-A to USB-C cable. Ooh, look what I almost missed. It also includes a set of four spare gaming switches. Nice. WASD. And of course the keyboard itself, which we're gonna be focusing on. And uh, I'm gonna go get my other mic out so you can get an idea of how it sounds. All right, here we go. Hear that? It actually sounds pretty much like most other gaming keyboards. It's got a little bit more of a, it, it, it's a little bit quieter, but you still get that, that smack. So if you like that kind of noise, you're definitely going to get it off of this for sure. Um, frame is made out of plastic, I believe, but it's very durable plastic. Um, looking at the back here, you got the two flip up legs. See that? And then these feet in the front are rubberized to hold it onto the desk. You can download the Dragon software at www.reddragonzone.com slash pages slash download. Don't worry, I'll put a link down there and there, right there, you see it? Right there. All right, while installing the software, I got this message, Windows protected your PC. Uh, the answer if you want to install the software is run anyway, obviously. But, um, you know, the, if you don't really need the software, don't install it, is what I'd say. But uh, I, I definitely want to use some of the functions, so I'm going to run anyway. All right, here we are in the Red Dragon software. Uh, this is not going to be an extensive demo of this by any means, but I do think it's almost never shown in videos, so I do want to go through it a little bit. And... The main areas that you're working with are right here. You see these six areas? Key custom, trigger setting, senior keys, light setting, performance, and macro. And the thing to note is that in most cases, macro and the senior keys, actually, I think in all cases, those get set up here in key custom. So you make the senior keys, you make the macro, and then you apply it here in key custom. Again, I'm not going to go into it too much, but I am going to show you just a little bit. There's also trigger settings here, and this is where you can set um, how sensitive your keys are and where the um, where the initial press, basically where the initial, if we're talking digital, where the initial one goes and where the zero would be set. So basically the height at which this actuates, and you can actuate it right here. And you also have the quick trigger capability and you can set that down here 
And see right there, I've got Q selected. That's how that works. Next, we're gonna go to senior keys. Again, I'm just going over this a little bit. You can set up keys to do two different things, as I mentioned before. So in this case, I'm gonna bind a key to do A and B as I press it down further and further. You can also go back on the upstroke, which is pretty useful, honestly. Um, if there's some timing that you wanna manually control, this is the way to do it. It's a little, uh, you know, it's a little tricky for somebody like me, but I think most people who are younger uh, would definitely not have a problem with it. I think the two modes are actually really super useful for me. Uh, going back up and remembering, uh, it, my memory's terrible. But anyway, let's just really quick, we're going to go on to line two here, and we're going to set up DKS2. So I'm going to say at first press, this is now D. And as it gets further down, right here at 3.6, it's going to be E. So there we go. I can set up those keys. And if I hit the one key and then push further down, it's going to do the second thing. So if I press, it's A, press down further, it's B, uh, D and E. There we go. That is senior keys. Just a quick run through though. Light settings. Man, there's a lot of light settings on this. I'm going to show you how to do this from the keyboard as well. It's not as um, robust as this is, but you can actually do quite a bit from the keyboard itself uh, with shortcut keys. But anyway, you can go through, you can change it to breath, you can set the colors, you can set the speed and the brightness. So if I go to another area like wave, look at that, I can change the wave direction. And this is something that some of the cheaper keyboards uh, don't do really well. They'll have features that the particular lighting system doesn't support uh, in their interface. So you don't ever know what really applies. So this is really pretty cool, honestly, in my opinion. And it works really well, and it's super simple and self-explanatory. Next is performance, which this section, I don't know, man. <laughs> it, there's not a lot to it. If you go to keyboard properties, it shows your repeat delay and repeat rate and it's got the cursor this is all in the os anyway it's just a quicker way to get to it so there's not a lot i was kind of expecting it to change the polling rate but it doesn't all right sorry about that little jump cut there i'm gonna go into macros real quick and just show you how to record a macro we're gonna make a new one right here see that little plus and macro four i'm gonna rename it to bulb three and hit a check mark and then all you got to do is hit record, start record. So some things to note, it records both the downstroke and the upstroke. So if you press it for a while, it'll remember that. There we go. It was 2485 milliseconds. And then there was a difference between these two keys. So basically you recorded exactly how you're doing it, but note how it does. It records the time pressed, the time between presses. So you can get like perfect and I mean perfect timing on this if you get it right when you're hitting the keys. So I'm gonna stop recording right there. It is now the Bob 3 macro, and uh, you can delete them, export them, whatever you want if you've got a really great macro. Next, we are gonna apply it. I'm gonna go over here to Key Custom, and there we go, default. Uh, it's, by the way, it, it, it's just saying the default here is Q. That's all it's saying, but anyway. Okay, so I got Q there. And I'm going to go over to the, uh, you can do a simple remap, but uh, let's just go over to the macro. And I can assign the macro Bob 3. And there we go. We've got Bob 3 assigned as a macro. And then the same goes for, where'd you go, where'd you go? Where'd you go, where'd you go? Senior keys. You can do the same thing with senior keys. Uh, you can say, I'm gonna unmap. Oh, I've already got a mapping for Q. I'm gonna go over to E, and uh, I want to set that to a senior key that I set up earlier. I can choose DKS2, and I've set that to that key. Can you see that? So now I've got both those keys set. Uh, note that all these red ones cannot be programmed. So, no programming those because they're already programmed to something. All right. Now, I don't want to keep those settings, so I'm going to hit reset on the right. That's 
very thoughtful of them to include, and I will lose all my mappings. Awesome. That's it. Pop quiz, folks. See if you can answer this one. When was the first keyboard invented? I'll give you 10 seconds to think about it. The first keyboard was invented back in 1867 by a guy called Christopher Latham Scholes. Believe it or not, uh, the typewriter existed before the keyboard existed. Think about that one. Anyway, if you got this one right, give yourself a point. All right, let's customize the keyboard right here from the keyboard itself instead of using software, since right now I have it hooked up to my Mac and that choice isn't there. So you want to change backlighting options. You just hit Function Alt and this is, see, that makes sense, right? And there's 14 different backlight options. I like this one a lot. But I want to show you some of these which are, wait. I like some of these that are like respond to your input. Like this one and that. This one's weird too. See, as I go faster, imagine playing decathlon. I like this a lot and that a lot. All right, let's get back to uh, some scrolling stuff. Yeah, we'll go up one. Okay, this guy right here, say, want to turn it off? Function spacebar. See that? Pretty easy, right? Now, if I want it to be brighter, I hit function M. And it's got five levels of brightness. See? And of course, off is one of the brightness levels. Uh, but there is a really low one that you can barely see, which is not too bad either. So if you've got something like this that's rotating, you could speed it up by using this guy right here. See? And then if you would like it to just go back to the original settings, uh, you can hit function escape. It's very, it, it's very easy to figure out what the keys do. I, I like the layout for this. It's really nice. All right, here we have Ziggurat 2, which is one of my favorite games. The original, uh, the original was huge for me. I hear them. I, I hear the baddie. But anyway, how's the keyboard working? Well, I'm going to say it's a little bit quieter than... Oh, there you go. A little bit quieter than my other keyboard. And of course, you know, the, the contact is dead on here, you know? I mean, to be expected, right? With a gaming keyboard. To be honest, on keyboards these days, I don't feel much of a delay, but this definitely feels very sharp and responsive. Come on, you. Well, I hate this guy. Come here. You like the skillet required me to just dive right into his fire? My goodness. Come on. There we go. There we go. Good, good, good. Anyway, I don't really know what playing a game in front of you with the keyboard actually proves other than the fact that uh, yes, the keyboard works with games, but 
again, my real takeaways from it is it's very responsive. It feels really nice. Um, it's not, it's got just enough mush, but not too much. And the other thing is, I think it's slightly quieter than my other keyboard, which I, this one I cannot hear as much through my headset as my uh, standard Mac knockoff keyboard, which isn't really, a, I mean, it's a nice one. It's not a Mac knockoff one, but the, the other one I've got is fairly nice as well. But yeah, this one does, it, it, it's quieter for sure, uh, while still retaining that positive click. All right, so parting thoughts on the Fizz K617 by Red Dragon. Um, number one, I love the look of this thing. I think it's just a great looking keyboard. Uh, I think the construction quality is really quite high on it. It feels really nice. I love the, the smack that the keys make when you hit them. Sounds really nice. Uh, light system is very bright. I like that. It's a lot brighter than the keyboard I use here on the Mac. Uh, it also has a wide variety of different patterns, and I think many of those light patterns are really interesting. The keyboard's built-in functions are really easy to remember and execute. I mean, you know, just function alt to go through, uh, function space, turn it on and off, and then it's really easy to remember this to go to go uh, cycling through speeds. So it, it's really very intuitive, uh, unlike many of them. The software is also pretty good, especially the macro settings. It's a little bit sparse, but you know what? The, the light and macro settings work really well. Uh, some of the negatives of it is there's that software alert when you're installing it. So uh, some antivirus might uh, make your life miserable with it. The general sacrifices that you make when using a 60% keyboard, like you don't have dedicated like up, down, left, right. You you do have to hit function, you know, W A S D for that. You know, that's that's one of the negatives about it, but it's something you're gonna know when you get it. And one more thing, I would say that the legs in the back here could use to be just a little bit longer. I'd like a little bit more lift. I'd like it to come up to about there, and I would be super happy uh, with the height. But uh, all in all, I mean, it's a really great keyboard. I'm going to replace the one that I use at work. I actually have a 60% keyboard that I use at work. And it is a lot less intuitive when you want to change anything on it than this one is. Uh, th this is just a way more polished product. So really like it. Uh, give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in it, I've got a link down below and I'll probably pin one to the comments as well, which will give the channel a little bit of money. Anyway, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in a couple days. Bye.